think I love you So what am I so afraid of? Afraid that I'm not sure of Love there is no cure for I say what ho this is Brian call me Gollum the evil one telling tales that can't be told Gardner coming to you from the darkest depths of Mordor i.e. the Ramble on Towers dungeon studio in scenic Hasper Ontario you are listening to Ramble on Radio episode 64 Ramble on Radio is the only Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets be sure to go to rambleonradio.com for your Led Zeppelin news and any links I might mention during the show you can subscribe to the podcast through iTunes uh, if you do, leave a review. Just stop in and leave a review. Give it a star. Give it two stars. Give it five stars. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Go to Spreaker. You can listen to this on Spreaker. You can download it. You can um, uh, embed it on your own websites. It's Spreaker.com. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And uh, follow me. Follow Ramble on Radio on Spreaker. And um, it helps with placement. It's one of these things. Uh, and, if, and if you get yourself 100 listeners, you can always... Um, 100 followers, it helps get, uh, you can get the podcast over to iHeartRadio, or it helps. It's one of the things they look for, uh, which would put it in front of thousands and thousands of people. And uh, check it out at uh, Ramble on Radio on YouTube, and I am videoing this on YouTube, and um, uh, th this time I'm just doing a basic quick time video off my computer, and I have an idea for later. I know, I keep, I'm fooling around with this. Last week's didn't work. I dire went directly to YouTube, simply didn't work. Uh, this would, but I got the week before I finally got it. <laughs> I had to actually remix it down to a smaller file to get it up on YouTube. That's what happened. So this, uh, it's, but I have a small camera. Um, it's back there. Uh, my daughter gave it to me. I forgot all about it. It's a small video camera that she got at a place she worked. I'm going to try it out next week. Maybe it'll make a nice little video. And the advantage of it would be I could move it around and show you some other stuff. Uh, so anyway, check me out on YouTube, Ramble on Radio. Uh, within the next few weeks, I will really get that stuff figured out. And follow Ramble on Radio on Facebook, Google+, and Ramble on Blog on Twitter. Are we still recording? Okay, if you're on Facebook right now, everything just went haywire for a second. I am going to be... Um, I'm checking my my levels and stuff. So forgive me one second on, on, on YouTube. Sorry, if you're on YouTube. And we're back. Um, so, oh, oh, this is not good. I can't hear myself. Okay, I'm going backwards again, YouTube guys. My apologies. I think I've got it sorted out now. Record. We're back. All right. So what would you do to save $2? Um, what would you do to save $2? I'll tell you what I did. I did this this very week. I bought Led Zeppelin 2, which we will be discussing this week. This is the topic of the week is this particular CD. Led Zeppelin 2, not the deluxe edition. That's what she looks like, by the way. That's the remaster. So I go to my local HMV. I know they had these... I've been to a number of places. Everybody's got the deluxe editions. Nobody's got the single versions. I decide I just want the single version. So off I go to my local HMV. They have some stuff off to the one side and main wall. All deluxe editions. $14.99. So I kind of look through them. And I go back to where this, you know, they had some stuff at the back wall. If you go, I think on Facebook or Twitter, I posted a picture of they had a big back wall of stuff. Um, when this first came out, um, so I went back there, they had nothing. I went to the section they had, they had a regular Led Zeppelin three. They had two of those in the section. They had no Led Zeppelin twos. They had no Led Zeppelin ones. So I go back up to the front where the, this, the, where the first bit was looking and I kind of start, no, cause there's, there's probably 36. It's, it's three, three, uh, things deep, right? Uh, one, two, three sideways. 
uh, facing out. So, you know, you got probably about 36 discs there. So I kind of started nosing through it. I'm looking at the threes, actually, and the threes, they had some mixed in. They had a few non-deluxe. So I actually pulled those out for no good reason other than I pulled them out. And then I start, I pull out the whole, like the whole section of the two, and I'm looking through the two, trying to find the, you know, just one that's not a deluxe. And, and the girl who works there comes over, yeah, I can help you with that, she says, as I'm putting them back. And I says, I'm, no, this is my fault. I'm being an idiot. Um, I'm looking for not the deluxe. She says, oh, everything, well, all we have is the deluxe. She says, well, I says, I found a couple of non-deluxe threes in the three pile. So that's why I was looking for the twos. And she goes, no, no, we don't have any non-deluxe. And I held them up. I had, still had them sectioned, right? And I says, no, no, here they are. And I showed her the back because the back is not... In the, in the deluxe editions, you get the inverse cover on the back, right? That's, it's the easy way to tell, although she was looking at stickers when she did it. Um, so I show her the back. I says, no, this is the regular. And she goes, oh, God, we don't, we're not supposed to have any of those. And she starts, so now she starts doing what I just did. She starts going, I'm going, no, no, these are all good. Maybe the Led Zeppelin ones, not so much the twos and threes. I, you know, the, here's all the threes I, I've looked. And, and she goes, oh, wow, we've got to straighten this all out. She goes, there is some others over here. By the cash but they're all deluxe they're supposed to be all deluxes too so we go over to the cash and sure enough half of the threes are non-deluxes and there's three leads up with two non-deluxes and there's a bunch of one non-deluxes in there and well, now she's a pay and i'm going about it relax people get it people, no 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 no. this is no good oh this is no good and, I, and i'm apologizing sorry I'm, i've just messed up your day i know oh no no this this is great i'm so glad you found this. she's and you know you know that's that's nice of her but, you know, later that night at the party, she's telling all her friends about this dick of a customer who ripped apart her displays and made her look through. And, me, and she spent all day sorting Zeppelin, friggin' Led Zeppelin. So, but she was really great about it. So anyway, so I get, I get, so I get a non-deluxe too. And I get to the cash with it. And it's $12.99. I'm walking to the store again. You know, I just spent 15 minutes picking through CDs to save two friggin' dollars. And, and, I, and I did this... I'm thinking this as I'm standing at the booster juicer next door buying a four and a half dollar smoothie that's not even going to make it out of the mall. <laughs> so much trouble to save two friggin' dollars. Which leads to the question, why don't I want? Why do I care that much if I have a whole lot of love, rough mix with vocals on CD in the car? Because this is a, this, the only thing I do with CDs now is I keep them in the car. And I've kind of been building up a Led Zeppelin collection of car CDs for some reason lately. Um, as even as everything else is moving out of the car, um, and, and uh, but yeah, it's I, so why don't I want them? Is the question I have to ask myself. And and, and it, it, somebody, you know, because we talked about this when it first came out, and I, I I've had a few replies on on Facebook, and uh, it has been mentioned that uh, somebody's, you know, I I really like the instrumental versions. It. it it really adds something to, you know, it gives you a chance to listen to the music without the vocals distracting your attention. Agreed. 100% right. Uh, and found some stuff in there that I quite like. Um, it's not that. Uh, and I even mentioned last week, I think, in the out, of, out in the or two weeks ago, in the Out in the Tiles, the instrumental version, Bathroom Sounds, I believe they call it, on, on, on the, the third album, Deluxe Edition. Um, they... they uh, okay. uh, backwards my brain. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Um, the, 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 I, I found some stuff in the drums that you wouldn't have known was there. That he's kind of doing some fancy stuff. And yeah, that's cool and that's nice to hear. But a, I don't want to. I'm not going to be driving down the road to listen to it. And B, I've heard it. I've listened to it. And then I'm just going to go back to the normal version. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not. I, it's not that I don't like it. It's not that I'm not interested in it. It's not like it doesn't have something of interest there. It's that I know all, I know personally, I will probably never listen to to the deluxe edition stuff on two again. Now that we're through, now that I've done this podcast, unless I actually have reason to listen to it, or I may occasionally go, you know, go back to the Heartbreaker or Ramble On. The Ramble On rough mix with vocals is actually quite good. Uh, it's quite different in many ways, more acoustic, less electric. Um, and, and I think it's interesting. Lala is just, to me, Lala's a bit, um, it's an experiment. That it is an incomplete experiment. Um, um, and I was joking at the intro, you heard me in the intro singing the old uh, 
uh, Partridge Family song, I Think I Love You, over because it's got that tone and sound. Now, it's both, you know, I Think I Love You, 70 or 71, and this was 1970. So they're going to, you know, it's they were mocking or they were copying a sound that was popular at the time. Um, and, you know, obviously a finished product with these guys would have been much more sophisticated, uh, much more interested. But yeah, that's I was listening to it last night, and I'm thinking, Jesus, were they going to have David Cassidy as a guest vocals in this one? Maybe the David Cassidy session fell through, and uh, that's why they never released it. Um, <laughs> but it just is that, yeah, it's that very early 70s pop tone to it. Um, and it's interesting, and it's nice, and it'll never go listen to it again, and I certainly won't listen to it on a long car drive. Um, and, and the same sort, you know, just kind of goes all, all along. The Heartbreaker is good. I, I like it. It's interesting. The vocals, whole lot of love is interesting. What he's doing. Uh, what is what should never be. I really haven't picked up much in the way of difference. So, but it's not that I don't like this stuff. It's that um, uh, it, it's it's just a case of, you know, I'm sure it's, it's superfluous for me to have it. Uh, especially as I have it already on MP3. I did buy, buy the MP3s. Um, so, although this may be the only album that I, I really kind of feel that way about the bonus material. Um, the, the third album stuff I really like, and, and I would probably, you know, I don't think I'm going to wear myself out on it the next week. So, and, and in fairness to the band, in fairness to Jimmy Page, who's piecing this all together, um, they, Led Zeppelin 2 is a road album, right? We, we kind of mentioned this last week, but Led Zeppelin 1 was, they recorded in 18 hours. Of course they're not going to have extra material. But Led Zeppelin 2 is a road album. They recorded it when when they got a day off. They went into the studio and, and did some recording. They, you know, maybe took longer than Led Zeppelin 1, but I'm sure they didn't have a lot of material extra. If they recorded it, they were serious about it, they finished it. Um, that's what happens in road albums. You know, by the third album, now they're going into the studio for a while. They're hanging out. They're enjoying themselves. And you get the... Uh, you get the time to kind of explore your sounds a bit more, to, to, to do a second version of Since I've Been Loving You, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm sure as this goes along, these bonuses will actually get better and better. Um, and, and presence would be the one you would worry about, as Jimmy mentioned in an interview he worried about. By the way, I have my Led Zeppelin 2 collection here. There's 8-track, cassette, now CD. The first time I've owned Led Zeppelin 2 on CD. And LP, as I mentioned before, and I should have taken this out because I noticed the last time I had the albums out that it makes a lot of noise in the cover. And there it is. And it is um, in very good shape, actually. No, not bad shape, some scratches, but uh, I really never listened to it all that much. Now, um, but there you go. There's my versions of Led Zeppelin 2. And, um, yeah, I, I threw this on in the car, the CD, and not, not the 8-track. Didn't throw that on the car yet. Um, but the CD I did. And I think it was a Lemon song. I was noticing stuff that I never noticed before. So it's... Uh, and it really does sound quite good. Like this album, though... Like this album was done in the 90s. People with the uh, audio files, I think, would complain that it's that it's... Um, over compress it sounds over compressed I, I do think what it is is he toned down the guitars a bit and I think he recorded it with listening to it in headphones of mine so therefore he pulls back a little on the highs on the guitars and that sort of thing and the lemon song is a great example of a very different Jimmy Page tone um, but even a whole lot of love and, and you know heartbreaker to a degree he's, it's not the playing that's that's pulled back. It's the tone of the guitar that he's cut back a little bit on. Um, and and I, I do think that's what he was thinking. That this would sound better in the headphones. You, you get the stuff going on in the headphones. And that was something that was in vogue at the time. Um, uh, much as the Partridge family was in vogue. It was an odd time with a lot of different stuff going on. Um, so... All right, so uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? I was going to tell you something. Um, you know, I um, I went back and checked the the video from two videos ago, and 
One thing is very apparent. I really got to do something about my hair. Oh, 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 oh. oh, this is bad news. I'm looking at it now. Oh, Jesus. Um, but there you go. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. I was going to say, uh, before I get too far into this, um, iTunes. I, I, I checked some iTunes reviews this week. Uh, I went to, like, I see the Canadian ones, and I checked it, and it was me and somebody else, and I, and I just did it, at the time I did it, because I started telling you guys to, uh, and I held back, I only gave myself four stars, I should point out, uh, although in fairness I should, probably should have dropped three, uh, apparently I gave myself a low rating though, and I'll, I'll get to that in a sec, um, but I really just, yeah, gave it a promo push, uh, but it was also more, I wanted to see what I saw from the reviews, you know, so, so I put one in more that, to start the ball rolling and to see what I saw. But I don't see anything non because I'm Canadian, I only see Canadian reviews. Um, so there's one other, but you can change what store you're at in I, I, iTunes and then read the reviews from that country. You gotta change it, look up the country, or change it to the country, then look up the podcast, go to the podcast, go to reviews, and I can do it. So I found that out this week. So I uh, I did I went I checked the American reviews. There's four of them. Thank you so much, everybody. Five stars in every one of them. Uh, I was blown away. I was really expecting um, um, I, I was I was let's put I was bracing <laughs> because a the internet can be a real nasty place. Um, and if you're gonna write stuff on the internet, you have to be really you know it takes a little time to to get used to the idea that some guy just for fun can tell you you're a dick um he may not even mean it um so i you know i and this isn't look this is an amateur production um and and thank you because you all understood that they, matter of fact it was kind of sad this it sounds great that's a great quality um i just have a microphone plugged into my computer here so it's not nothing fancy quality wise um I do as little extra work as possible. You know, if I had to put three or four hours a week into making this happen at home in front of the computer, kind of, that's why the video doesn't hasn't it stopped happening because it looked like it was going to turn into a chore, and I don't have that three or four hours to do. So anyway, I wanted to thank you all really very much for those reviews. It was, it was outstanding, and I and I'll be looking some other countries as the as the weeks go on. Um, my computer was acting sluggish. And didn't want to didn't want to cooperate when I tried to check the UK, but I will check other ones. Um, and, and I thank you. I thank you so much for those reviews, uh, for your kind words. Uh, and uh, I think it's I think fella's name is Lloyd. Commented on Facebook that he bought. Um, and if I have it wrong, whoever, I apologize for getting your name. I don't have it in front of me. Commented on Facebook that uh, um, he he only heard of these these remasters because of listening to this podcast he didn't even pick it up in the regular media um, and he also mentioned the same goes for Jason Bonham's tour which uh, I believe uh, I didn't go back and check everything but I believe he mentioned that in a review uh, I really want to thank him for that and he also said uh, you know I hope you get some official recognition well um, I I'm pretty resigned to that not happening uh, I have to tell you that um, which is in its way liberating yeah, it is what it, you know I, I can live with that so uh, anyway, I wanted to say that. I wanted to make sure I said it. Thank you so much to the people who reviewed. Gave me five stars. And uh, uh, I was truly blown away. I was, I was kind of expecting that to, to, have, to um, <laughs> have to suck it up and read these reviews, you know. And uh, yeah, it was great. that was great. Uh, I'm glad you're liking what I do. Because you sit here, because I think, I kind of go, oh, kind of, that was kind of cheesy or that was kind of amateur. And uh, you wonder what people want, you know. Here I am drinking my coffee in front of the computer, by the way. Uh, Tim Hortons. Although it's just a mug, it's, it's actually from a Tassimo. We buy the Tim Hortons rings. All right, let's go back to Led Zeppelin 2. I wanted to give myself a break on Led Zeppelin 2 there, because I, I just wanted to. So, I, my personal experience with Led Zeppelin 2, I, I, this is like last week. I went backwards to Led Zeppelin 2, and it was so much of the sound of this album was so common. By the time I went backwards to it, it was nothing outrageous about it. There was nothing mind-blowing. This was not, wow. And, and Whole lot of Love was obviously a song I knew, so I, I didn't put a whole lot of love on and go, 
what is this? It's something I had picked up in the background before I ever put the album on. What happened to me with Led Zeppelin 2 was, and I never gave it, I put it on, I listened to it a few times. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. It's a nice song. Um, that sort of thing. But uh, I, as a young guitar player, I'm starting to get into the bluesy stuff. And so Bring It On Home caught my attention. And then I was at the uh, the old Bramley City Center. We used to have um, a little political lesson you don't probably want or need. But, but uh, back in the 70s and 80s even, um, right through the 80s, Sunday shopping was illegal in Ontario. Uh, you could not go to the store on Sunday. You could not go to the grocery store on Sunday. So you could not buy beer or wine. It was a pain in the ass, i got to tell you. Um... <laughs> but somewhere in the late 70s they changed the law modified the law somewhat so you could have like flea markets on Sundays it, it, or you could use you could always do flea markets you always do kind of that like rummage sales that sort of thing they changed the law to allow like malls and stuff to set up like a flea market so the Bramley City Center was a big mall um, walking distance from me uh, Sam the Record Band was there. I bought all my records at Sam the Record Band. Um, and, and on Sundays, the bottom level of the mall was a flea market. All the stores were closed, but the bottom level was a flea. They bring these flea markets. And this guy was selling books, and I found Led Zeppelin too. And, and when we did... Now, I went looking for it a few minutes ago, um, and it turns out it's this may be the worst day of my life. Um, my wife is right. Oh, man, I have to clean my office. She keeps telling me that I can go in my office, not yours. Ignore it. And uh, this weekend she was into me, you know, you're right. It's your office. I'll ignore it. And I was down there to look for this book. Oh, damn it, she's right. I have to clean this office, um, which I hate to do in the sun. You know, nice weather. I don't want to be down in the dungeon. But you know what? You'll notice I'm not actually recording in the darkest depths of Mordor. I'm not actually recording in the dungeon. I'm back up in the boudoir as much as anything because I could not fit my computer, my microphone, my iPod on my friggin' desk right now uh, down in the dungeon. Um, it is brutally <laughs> It's awful. So, yeah, and I could not find the book. I was going to bring the book up because I, I told you guys about it during the, um, when I did uh, uh, collectibles. And um, what I was, I, but I didn't, I wasn't videoing it, so I was going to show it to the, you know, camera. But uh, for those of you listening, ignore that last bit. Pretend this is the book. I have the book. I have the book. But anyway, I had the music. It's a sheet music book. It's not kids who think yeah, all guitar music has always come in tabs um, no such thing in the 70s um, and this was probably 79 80 when I got this um, no such thing no such thing it was it was basically it was in uh, it was guitar transcribed in that it was written an octave higher than it's played or an octave lower I gotta think about this middle season uh, octave higher than it's played so what that does you know, I don't know if guitar players know this kind of, um, brings everything, like, like, if you look at piano music, it's, there's two clefs, there's two, there's 11 lines, you know, uh, and middle C, if you've heard of middle C, it's the line in between the two clefs, is what it is. Um, if you wrote guitar, you would be half one clef, half another, where, where it's played. Um, so they move it up an octave, and it brings it basically into the treble clef, into the high clef. Um, so this is how this is written. This is written with little dots and, you know, eighth notes, quarter notes, semi-quavers, you know, um, demi-quavers, etc., etc., uh, in, in, in the treble clef. So I, I brought this book home and I sat and learned that. I know just from this, this book, all the licks of this, you know, the Lemon Song, Whole lot of Love, Heartbreaker, Living Loving Maid, uh, Moby Dick, Bring It On Home. I know the licks in those. Um, um, not that I do I did at one time learn this entire solo of Heartbreaker um, I listen to it now and go I can't believe I could play that but I could I could, I could play it I could play it straight I can't do that anymore um, but yeah so I know all the licks and and, uh, and, and I, I suspect I fooled around with what is what should never be never really learnt it um, because when they show you the chords, they show you the open chords, like you're playing, um, 
you know, as if you're playing Annie's song or something. Um, or as he doesn't play down there that often. He's playing up the neck. He's using he's using forms of chords up the neck and stuff. So what is, things like what isn't what should never be and, and ramble on. Um, I didn't get through this book. I just didn't. Um, um, that was a, that was above my skill level. How's that? Um, although I could probably sit down and do it now because uh, it's really a knowledge thing, right? It's it, it's I I know what sort of what he's doing and that what it provides you with is the chords and the base notes of the little the basic notes in the little melody parts. You, you could probably piece it together pretty quick if, if you thought. But I, at the time, I was incapable of that one. But anyway, I sat, so I ended up having the headphones on uh, and bringing it on home to death. Bringing it on home is the one I really loved from this particular perspective. Uh, it was the first really kind of straight up blues, uh, you know, with that style, boom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom, um, of anything that I'd ever played, you know. And I kind of, I remember being shocked at how easy it was. Jeez, that's so easy. Um, and then, you know, you'd hear other stuff and go, that, that sounds like the same thing. And then, oh, and this is how, you know, you learn how to play guitar, really. But um, So a lot of my experience with this album is not so much as a listener, is it's, it's a student of guitar studying it, trying to figure it out, uh, learning the licks. I, to me, it's a very heavy lick album when it's not really, like whole lot of love's got, you know, a slide guitar and chorus and, the, you know, the different stuff going on in the in the bridge. What is it that should be is a beautiful slide solo. Um, even the Lemon song is more of a chord pattern than a lick. So much stuff going on. So there's a lot going on in this album that's not lick based. But to my mind, it's always been just a, a pretty straightforward lick based album. Uh, and I think a lot of other people see it that way. And I think a lot of other people are wrong. A um, couple of notes on it that I made listening. Um, I, I wanted to think about uh, thank you uh, listening to this version listen to it on the headphones at work listen to it in the car really surprised the the harmony stuck out um, really beautiful harmonies in there uh, and I wondered who did them was it uh, uh, John Paul Jones or John Bonham uh, guessing not Paige uh, I'm thinking it was John Bonham it, it really because they do say he was a very good um, very good um, singer and uh, so I, I'm thinking it was him, but uh, but I don't know for sure. It could have been Jonesy, uh, but it's very pretty harmonies, and it's clearly, clearly not Robert. That's the thing that struck out to me. I always just kind of assume Robert doubled up the vocals, but you listen to it, no, that's really, that's somebody else, and that's a pretty voice. Uh, that's a nicely done uh, vocal harmony. Um and, and that's something that really shines out in this new edition. The new edition, as you can see here, on, uh, I'm bouncing back and forth on my screen, but anyway, there you go. Um, which doesn't sound so clear on the 8-track or the cassette. You know, just, I'm showing the YouTube folks this, by the way. <laughs> oh, what the heck? We're here for fun, right? Um... So anyway, I wanted to go, uh, let's go into the deluxe edition. The deluxe edition has, um, oh, I should go over the whole thing. Side one, from the album, this is the actual setup. Now, um, I should go to the 8-track. I should screw you all up and do the 8-track. You know how this would work really well? If I could friggin' read it. Uh, those of you, you guys in the YouTube world, just hold this for a minute. It's so, like, I'm, I'm doing this here, trying to read this. Here. Sure, about my glasses. Whole lot of love, thank you. Whole lot of love, thank you. The Lemon Song, Heartbreaker. What is and what should never be. Living, loving, major, just a woman. Ramble on, part one. Ramble on, part two. Moby Dick and bring it on home. So interesting that um, it goes living, loving, maid, ramble on, Moby Dick, bring it on home. But Heartbreaker and uh, what is and what should never be are separated. Or Heartbreaker and living, loving, maid are separated. What is and what should never be is moved from the second song to the fifth song. Heartbreakers from the fifth song to the fourth song. Um, and Thank You and Lemon Song are then flipped. That's on the 8-track. That's how, it, then that's in a, you know, that's not like a reissue 8-track. That's, that's from the 70s, I promise. Um, yeah, the, the cassette, which I'm thinking it was an 80s version cassette, by the way, um, has the actual running order of the same, of the album. 
And here is the running order of the album. Ta -da -da -da, the official Led Zeppelin II running order. Whole lot of love. What is and what should never be. I'm reading right out of the thing. You can see. Lemon Song. And thank you. Side 2. Heartbreaker. Living, loving maid. She's just a woman. Ramble on. Moby Dick. Bring it on home. How many people knew the words in brackets, she's just a woman, go with living, loving maid? I just always called it living, loving maid. <laughs> and I never... Uh, I've probably noticed that before. But it didn't stick in the register. And... Uh, um, but that's interesting on the 8-track that I'm going to have to give that a listen to later. I, I, interesting on the 8-track that Living, Loving, Made and Heartbreaker are split up. And it'll be interesting to he, see how Living, Loving, Made comes across after what is and what should never be. That'll be a very interesting... Um, I will report back on that. I wish I'd have noticed that before. It might have been something worth, um, worth speaking of. On the other hand, I have all the Zeppelin 8-tracks. And... Running order might just be a good theme down the road. Yeah, I'll be looking for something in July. You know, once this all once this is all blown over between this and the next uh, set of set of re-releases, um, uh, I'll be looking for some themes. So maybe eight track running orders may be an interesting one. Um, okay. Anyway, so the deluxe edition, what we get is whole lot of love, rough mix with vocals, uh, which is whole whole lot of love. It's um, before they add a lot of the fidgety, before they add a lot of the, it's the basic backing track. It's the actual backing track of the song, but they haven't got the slide in the soul. They haven't got most of the bridge in. Um, all the uh, overdubs aren't really in yet. Um, and the vocals are different. Uh, and the vocals are, I, I, I've said this previously, the vocals are interesting because they're different, because he doesn't sing a chorus so much as he kind of, runs off so you know he kind of goes oh, la, 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 you know and and he doesn't do the straight give me a whole lot of love give me a whole lot of love which is um kind of a traditional way to do a song and what he does in this rough mix of vocals is the kind of the way he treats songs down the road um uh, it's you know after this album he starts moving they start moving away very much from the traditional verse course verse course song uh, a little bit of it in three well, I, I mean you get it in four with rock and roll uh, but not nearly as it's starting to disappear, uh, and this is part. This is part of that exploration. Uh, that maybe is the most interesting thing about that whole lot of love, and how much, without all the extra stuff in, how much it flat out grooves. It just they really catch a groove, and that's what underlies that whole song. Everything else is is extras. Everything else is superfluous in a way to the groove. That groove, and that's in rock music always. Just that groove. And ride that groove. Um, that's good music. It always is. It always appeals to people. Uh, what is and what should never be. Rough mix with vocals. Um, I was in this number, and I'm. Uh, I'm not sure I picked up anything different than the regular. Um, I'm sure it's there, uh, and it may even be obvious, uh, but I have not picked it up. Maybe if I had the deluxe edition in my car, I might have picked it up. Maybe that's the problem I'm having. Uh, thank you, backing track. Um, this is one of those instrumentals, and it's um, it's a pretty song, but it needs words to really be. Otherwise, it's just. Mm. Um, uh, but as has been pointed out on the Facebook page, go to the Facebook page, leave your opinions. Um, go to if, uh, Ramble on Blog on Twitter, leave your opinions. Uh, find me on Google Plus and speak to yourself. Really, I just don't do Google Plus. I'm there. Uh, I never wind up there. Mm. But anyway, uh, as, as this is important. You do hear stuff that you hadn't heard before uh, in Thank You, in the backing track. And that's true. Um, Heartbreaker, rough mix with vocals. I should have taken the solo from Heartbreaker for my intro. That would have been good. Anyway, Heartbreaker, rough mix with vocals, different solo. There is some There is some different vocals. Um, it's actually quite a good cut. And, and it's an, yeah, it's interesting to hear this done differently. Um, living, loving, that, I mean, this one is really interesting to me. Living, loving, made she just a woman backing track, just the backing track. And again, yes, you pick up some of the stuff in the music. You go, mm. this is the song they, the band, pretty much declared they don't like. They're, I think both Page and Plant have more or less said it's the one song they don't like in this album canon. They never played it live. Their their disdain for it is well known. Yet here it is. Here it is. Um, 
I'm not sure what they... I, I've always liked it, actually. I've always thought it was one of the better songs in this album. Um, but I, I... I have no idea why they don't like it. But they but they don't dislike it enough that they wouldn't put the backing track on. <laughs> How's that sound? How is that for a backhand compliment? Um, okay, that's on the screen, not my nose. Uh, Ramble On, Rough Mix with Brooke. It's a very different version of Ramble On. A lot less electric work, a lot more acoustic stuff. Um, coming out of verses and stuff, they do things touch differently. Uh, it's very interesting. It's very, growing on me very much. I very much like the Ramble On. Uh, Moby, Trick, ba Moby Dick backing track. This is Moby Dick more or less without the drum solo. Um, the drum solo edit out. Which means it's, you know, it's about a minute and a half long and it's, it's really just that lick and, and then the guitar work. And it's an interesting, without the distraction of the drum solo, it's an interesting look at it. But it's not something you would, you know, you're not, you're not going to play it at parties and stuff. It, it, you know, it, it's just one of those, okay, I've heard it. Mm. Um, I may even use it once in a while here or something like that. But in La La, I've already talked about La La a bit. It, it's a, there's about six parts to it. They're moving all over the place with it. It really sounds like an experiment, uh, a bunch of pieces they're putting together and something they decided somewhere along the line, no, this isn't going where we thought it would. Or, um, maybe somebody said, oh, that's crap, are you kidding me? But uh, a very 1971-ish. It would have been interesting to see the finished product, what they do with La La. Um, but they never, uh, obviously they never did. And again, like I said before, you know, when you're running from studio to studio, you're cramming it in between shows. Uh, if at some point you decide, you know, this isn't working, it, it, you don't have time to make it work, right? You don't, you don't can't, kind of can't force that. You say, okay, that's not working. Move on. Maybe we'll get back to it. Maybe we don't. We never got back to it. Um, that's, that's the way it works with these guys, right? Um, and that's that's the album. That's that's the the extras. Um, I, I I I'm not going to tell you don't spend the extra two dollars. I'm not going to tell you waste half an hour of the poor girl who works their time. Um, I I I just was so unprepared to buy the extra songs. I really was in this case. Uh, won't be true for the next one. Won't be true for three. Uh, I haven't got three yet, by the way. Uh, I'm really kind of holding out for for July when my birthday comes around and the box set. So I don't. I'm not inclined to want to run out and buy the CD if I'm going to get the CD of the box set. I mean, you know. Um, but I will. I do have the the the. Um, I do have the iTunes. I do have it on my phone. I do have it on uh, on my iPod, and I will be talking about it next week. How does that grab you? Um, I wanted to say. Um, uh, the, the Led Zeppelin way, I talked a bit last week about Father, Father's Day, and the other kids throw some Led Zeppelin my way. Yeah, my daughter did. She bought me Led Zeppelin 1, the albums. It has not arrived from Amazon yet. Amazon Canada is way off the mark on these albums. They've really screwed up their the distribution of this stuff. Uh, whether orders were far exceeded um, expectations or whatever. Uh, the rumor is four and Houses of the Holy will be getting the treatment. Uh, not all three not in Four Houses of the Holy and Physical Graffiti, um, in, at the end of this year, looking at the rollout of this, looking at and knowing that Four will be the most popular album of the bunch, and looking at how hard a time they have, they're having meeting orders now for the vinyl, um, I think it's inconceivable that they add Physical, physical Graffiti. I mean, a bonus business Physical Graffiti is going to be, what, three, four vinyls? Um... And, and I don't use that in the hipster term. I just mean, you know, actual round things in the box. So you throw that in with Led Zeppelin 4 as a two album, and holy jumping Jesus. Um, they can't keep up with this demand on these three albums. How are they going to do it for those three? So, yeah, expect, I, I think looking at it, expect, really expect Led Zeppelin 4 and Houses of the Holy to come together. Really expect Physical Graffiti to hit in February as uh, as part of a 40th anniversary um, rollout. Um, that's what really seems likely to happen, doesn't it? Don't you think? 
Um, but anyway, I, have, I, I, it's been ordered, the Led Zeppelin one. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting it. I really want to put it on uh, and, and listen to it a few times. So I will probably somewhere down the weeks um, be reviewing it as an album. Uh, I'm also, I should point out, in July, I'm going to be taking two weeks away. Uh, not actually going anywhere. Don't rob the house. I'll be here. But I'm taking a holiday, and I'm taking a full holiday. I'm shutting it all down. I'm, I'm going to not not do this. Uh, barring major news or catastrophe or something, I will not be doing this. I will not be doing the writing. I will not be doing e any of my blogs or anything. Like I'm, I'm literally going to tune out the world for two weeks. Um, yeah. I'll post pictures on Facebook and stuff, I'm sure. But, so, the, uh, probably, I'm going to think this through, two more, and then, uh, so we'll talk about three, and then we'll have one last week before holidays, maybe we'll talk about summer holidays and stuff, maybe that's a good theme, uh, Led Zeppelin and then your summer holidays, um, and then uh, I'm going to take my summer holidays, so, um, I don't know, I just want to make sure you guys understand, know that that's coming, um, but that is it for number 64. Thank you again for your reviews. Thank you for following me on Spreaker. Check out RambleOnRadio.com for notes on this week's podcast, Led Zeppelin news and reviews, and any links mentioned in today's podcast. Follow Ramble on Radio on Facebook, Google+, and at Ramble on Blog on Twitter. Talk to me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, um, you can subscribe to Ramble on Radio through iTunes. Leave a review. I so appreciate everybody who did. Follow me on Spreaker. Um, and check it out at Ramble on Radio on YouTube. This will be up. I'm, I'm pretty sure this will work out fine. Thank you for listening to Ramble on Radio episode number 64. And keep it cool, babies.